as mentioned earlier or multiple times. Simu Liu, I probably butcher his name, who's the actor that's playing Shang-Chi, and he still, he, he doesn't know. Like, he, he is a guy that represents what I believe to be and really embodies the typical activist is what they are, activist. And they are people who have no, they don't even care about the projects that they're representing, right? Yeah, Shang-Chi, Masters of Kung Fu, uh, all of that, Asians of Atlas, none of that matters to him. He doesn't even probably know what any of those fucking things are. All he does is look at it like, well, this is my time to shine, and this is my time to virtue and signal, which is why some of the things that he talks about, which you've seen in like other interviews or we've covered it a couple of times on the channels where he, he is, is really self-important and it's weird because he's not exactly doing anything new. He's a man that is the primary focus of a Asian, like Chinese martial arts movie, right? Is kind of what that demographic is. Or just martial arts movies in general. We've already seen that. There was an entire crave going on in the 70s and 80s um, around this. We've had Asian superstars. Jackie Chan was one of the most worldly known superstars. You know, Bruce Lee's of the world. The Donnie Yen's, the... The uh, Jet Li's like we've, we've already seen this like that in itself isn't new. Now, that doesn't mean what your product that you're producing or rather you're putting out there. That doesn't mean that it's bad. It doesn't mean that there's something wrong with creating it. It's that it's a weird signal. We've already seen this. We've like and he's like, well, these Asians are finally going to see themselves like, dude, we've already seen this. We grew up on this stuff. Like, where have you been for the last 30, 40 fucking years, man? Where have you been? We've already seen. It's such a bizarre signal because it requires you to be completely absent minded of anything that has existed prior to, I don't know, today, I guess, or rather prior to the release of Shang-Chi. But we have another example of this because he can't keep his mouth shut on this because this is like, oh, look at me. This is my moment. My time for you. Shout out to Bounding in the comments to covering this. Uh, Sima Liu has continued to ignore history in order to virtue signal for brownie points. Uh, as the actor recently doubled down on the self-centered assertion that his upcoming Marvel film, Shang-Chi and Legend of the Ten Rings, will finally show audience an aspirational Asian hero. Like, like imagine that, like, all of these different movies that we've seen surrounded by Asians, just even in the last 20 years. Like, imagine how absent-minded you have to be when you think, finally, me, self-important Simu Liu. It's me like uh, like they see me and now they're going to feel like represented. Like, what the fuck have you been, bro? Liu revisited this rhetoric on August 31st Reddit AMA session. Throughout the online question and answer, Liu not only chose to respond near exclusively to softball questions with answers that felt forced and scripted, but in one particular instance, outright ignored series of questions of general of genuine substance. He says, uh, the, uh, continues rather, presented with a series of five questions by user Hot Zone Kill. Which Shang-Chi comics have you read that stuck out to you well? <laughs> I can tell you right now, he ain't read now Shang-Chi comic book. <laughs> he ain't read now one of them. I can tell you that right now. Who was your favorite sparring partner while in the movie? Uh, who would your top choice be to pay Amade- Amadeus Cho, which are they actually bringing him in a, a Marvel? Well, I guess because they introduced him and he's, uh, oh man, that's going to suck. I would rather see Swordmaster. Even though Swordmaster's newer, I would much rather see Swordmaster than I would uh, see fucking Amadeus Cho as uh, Asian Hulk. What's your favorite food item? On a Bopo Mofo. I have no idea what the fuck that is. Why is Tim Hortons uh, so disappointing? He asks as well. Uh, 
So, let's see. As he responded, Shang-Chi, he didn't even touch on any of this shit. He just says, Bopo, Mofos, and Maple Taters. And obviously, that's a bunch of questions. He's not obligated to answer every single one of those. Tim Horton is trying uh, too hard to do food menu items. Ice Cap still on point, though. So, he completely ignores the part of the question, which is like surrounding, okay, the Shang-Chi comic books. I don't know. The character that you're fucking playing. He says, nah, I'd rather talk about whatever this Bopo shit is. Uh, however, his inability to inspire any further questions, uh, question confidence in his upcoming film did not hinder Liu from using AMA as an opportunity to once again position himself as God sends for Asian representation, since uh, which he almost exclusively frames as having been devoid of any significant actor since 2012. He says... Uh, as an Asian actor, anytime someone starts with that dumb shit as a black person, as an Asian, as a gay person, as a when they start with that, I'm almost almost I personally. I'm almost just dismissing what it is just saying, because that's I don't need to hear that shit. Uh, uh, but, it, of course, the normies ask him the question of as an Asian actor, how difficult was it f- uh, for you working your way up? Did you have to deal with racism, stereotyping, typecasting? Well, he's clearly okay with it because he's playing an Asian martial artist, which we've seen, I don't know, 179 times. Let's put it this way. In 2012, when I first started out, and this is what he replied to. He says, put it this way. In 2012, when I first started out, I thought maybe if I worked really hard, I could be a guy that gets beaten up by one of the main characters one day. That was... What? Okay. He says, uh, also, and this is the comment right here. You can kind of see. Maybe you can't. He says, uh, that was the pinnacle for actors that look like me. So the pinnacle of Asian actors, according to him, was just getting beat up by bad guys or beat up by good guys. I'm ashamed to say that I put most uh, put on the most ridiculous and affix- offensive accents in the past, all because I thought it was more important to give the casting director what they wanted to be true to myself. That sounds like a personal problem right there. Over time, as I toured about it in the industry and struggled to find my footing, I started to realize all of the ways the industry discriminated against us and that we needed to become masters of our own narrative. Because the way that we were being portrayed was not positive or authentic. What is this guy talking about? That's why representation behind the camera is just as important as in front. Like, what the fuck are you? Like, look, I'm not going to pretend like Hollywood is like the beacon of like moral righteousness. I would, in fact, argue the complete opposite of that. But it's the idea that we haven't seen good guys, good Asian hell even in the Marvel so what the fuck was Wong did he forget about that guy like it's not like we haven't even in the Marvel Cinematic Universe seen Asians predicted like uh, like projected in a more positive light so what is he talking about like what like again to talk as if as he is talking you have to completely ignore the historical context of Asian American and just people that are born in pockets of Asia that have become fucking superstars uh, in the, in the movie business. You, you'd have to ignore that. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's completely fucking ignoring that. And even then when he talks about stereotypes, what the fuck you're playing a, a, a character that we've already seen before who was based on, I don't know, action heroes like the Bruce Lee's of the world. We've already seen your character, man. (sighs) These guys will never get it. So if they fail and if this movie fails, well, they get what they fucking deserve. You just watched a clip from my podcast for Canon's sake. Catch us live at 12 p.m. throughout the week over at YouTube.com slash YoungRipper59 and follow us over at Odyssey.com slash at YoungRipper59. If you want to watch the entire video cast after the show is over, just be sure to become a member on the YouTube channel. Of course, the full audio portion of the podcast is available for free on all major digital platforms or just visit ForCanonSake.com.